Saskatoon on Parade Photographs from the local history room celebrate the parade. Through the decades, Saskatoon spectators have packed the city sidewalks to watch and applaud parades. Whether annual events like the Traveler's Day, Children's Day, or Labor Day parades, or special occasions such as the Royal Visit or Soldiers Departing for War, the parade has played an important part in Saskatoon's social history. James Isvester in 1908 atop the M. Isvester and Son Parade float on 19th Street East near 3rd Avenue. Malcolm Isvester had opened his hardware store on 2nd Avenue in 1903. The rear of the building had a tinsmithing, plumbing, and steam heating shop. M. Isvester and Son was in business from 1903 until 1911 when it became Isvester and Pretty. The Marriott family on the Saskatoon Nursery Surprise Winning Float. Taken during the 1912 Saskatoon Exhibition, 1912 was also the year Arthur Marriott took over ownership of the Saskatoon Nursery, located at Avenue H and 32nd Street. Perched on the elaborate float are his wife Elizabeth, daughter Sybil, son Leslie, and an unidentified young man. On Monday, August 12, 1912, the Sells Float of Circus came to town, bringing with it exotic animal acts, trapeze and performance artists, as well as clowns and a Roman chariot race. The circus parade began at 10.30 from the tents at the Saskatoon Baseball Grounds on 2nd Avenue North, and proceeded down 1st Avenue before turning at the Windsor Hotel on 20th Street. Along with horses, elephants, camels, and tigers was a blood-sweating hippopotamus direct from the Nile. The visit of some 500 American realtors to Saskatoon prompted Saskatoon's first automobile parade on August 1, 1913. 350 elaborately decorated cars, representing every make of automobile in the city, paraded the downtown streets. The Saskatoon Pipe Band was one of the bands in the parade. Harold Parr and an unidentified man stand in front of the automobile Parr decorated for the CPR Farmlands Office in the 1913 Automobile Parade. Representing peace and plenty, the float was decorated with luxurious wheat. At the front of the car was an immense elk head, while at the back were a couple of prairie chickens. Stalks of grain enclosed the canopy. Peace and Plenty was awarded first prize of $15 in the Unique Cars category. Captain Alexander Ross and members of No. 3 Fire Hall Nutana pose with their fire truck. Decorated with flags, streamers, and flowers, the fire truck was one of three vehicles the Saskatoon Fire Department had in the 1913 automobile parade. Saskatoon sent its first contingent of volunteers off to war on August 23, 1914. The men, all with kit bags over their shoulders, marched through the streets lined with cheering crowds of people. The parade started out in an orderly fashion, but by the time it reached 23rd Street in the subway, men in uniform and civilians marched side by side to the CPR station. The second contingent of men of the 105th Regiment Saskatoon Fusiliers marched down 21st Street East past the Customs Office to the Canadian Northern Railway Station and the Canadian Expeditionary Force in Winnipeg. The 105th Fusiliers were organized in 1912 as the first military unit in Saskatoon. 
Its officers were young Saskatoon business and professional men. During the First World War, Christchurch Anglican was called the Soldiers' Church. Accompanied by a military band, soldiers marched from the church through Caswell, down 28th Street near Avenue D, on their way downtown. On Saturday, July 19, 1919, the Saskatoon newspapers reported that the whole city turned out to celebrate victory and peace. With decorated cars and floats, soldiers and schoolchildren marched to City Park, where John Philip Sousa's band played and speeches and tributes were given. Marching down 23rd Street dressed in various costumes, members of the United Commercial Travelers Band were part of the victory parade. Members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local No. 589, stand beside their floats at the Saskatoon Powerhouse. The floats were part of the Labour Union section in the 1919 Peace Parade and depict electrical advances in household laundering since the local's formation in 1910. A limousine entirely covered with white tissue and green trimmings was the entry from Harold W. Parr menswear in the 1928 Traveler's Day Parade. Wearing white outfits, the small footmen on the coach have been identified as Willie Cohen, Crosby Johnson, Marion Parr, Gordon Parr, Stuart Parr, and Marvin Johnson. Harold Parr's efforts won first prize. Caged wild animals pose with their small owners in front of the Hudson's Bay service station at 215 Second Avenue North. From the 1920s until the 1950s, the annual Children's Pet Parade was a big event in downtown Saskatoon. With decorated bicycles, tricycles, doll buggies and wagons, Saskatoon youngsters, many in creative costume, paraded their dogs, cats, rabbits and other family pets for fun and prizes. Pioneer florist and proprietor of the Saskatoon Nursery Mrs. Elizabeth Marriott stands beside her float in the 1930 Traveler's Day Parade. The automobile decorated with dahlias and white colored tissue was awarded first prize. Help the lions help the blind is the motto on this 1938 Traveler's Day float. The Saskatoon Lions Club was formed on March 24, 1937 with Aid to the Blind, major club activity. Work with the Blind started in 1938, when the Lions Club helped the North Saskatchewan branch of the CNIB hold its first annual White Cane Tag Day. On September 17th, the citizens of Saskatoon donated $832 to the Blind. The McGuire Lumber Company float in the 1938 Traveler's Day Parade in front of 3rd Avenue United Church. Established in 1927 by F. A. McGuire, the McGuire Lumber Company was located at 2nd Avenue and King Street. Dealers in retail lumber, building supplies, coal and wood, the company would later become Reliance Lumber. On June 3, 1939, Their Majesties King George VI and Queen Elizabeth visited Saskatoon. Huge crowds of some 157,000 people thronged the streets. It was the greatest civic welcome ever staged in Saskatoon. 
A display depicting a cross-section of Saskatchewan agriculture life was arranged in a large area on Pacific Avenue near the freight sheds. The Royal Automobile Parade is seen turning onto 22nd Street against the background of industrial exhibits. Dressed in a sheer white gown, Florence Vanelstein appeared as Canada on the Palm Dairies float in the 1940 Traveler's Day Parade. The entry, which placed second in the B section, was perhaps the most striking in the entire parade and drew great applause as it passed by. Spectators on Spadina Crescent near St. Paul's Roman Catholic Cathedral watch as armored tanks and military personnel, including men and women of the Army, Navy, and Air Force, march in the Army Day Parade. Crowds of Saskatoon citizens thronged the streets on Wednesday, October 3, 1945, to welcome home the 1st Battalion Saskatoon Light Infantry. The returning soldiers marched from the Canadian National Railway Station down 21st Street to Kiwanis Park, where the civic welcome was given. It was an historic day, for the welcome back from the war marked the disbanding of the unit. Parked on Avenue H, Weston Bakery's float from the 1952 Traveler's Day Parade advertises Weston's extra-thin saltines using a small girl and a large box of crackers. Weston Bakery pledges that they are always fresh, always crisp. These three smiling ladies are on the first prize winner in the Traveler's Day Commercial Floats competition. The 1952 Saskatchewan Government Telephones Float had for its motto, The Voice with a Smile. Canada's Centennial was the theme of the 57th Annual Traveler's Day Parade, held August 11, 1967. These two youngsters got in the spirit of things by decorating their miniature car with Canadian and Centennial flags and wearing their finest Western outfits. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of Saskatoon on Parade. The original gallery show was held from July 22nd to August 21st, 2008, curated by Rom Jeremko with the assistance of local history staff. We invite you to visit local history the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.